Hi, welcome to another new quick tip. Uh, this is Pedro Flores, and uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about camera aim constraints. Always, we want the ability to be able to, yes, move the camera independent from all the other objects, but also we would like to have a target that we would like to point to, and we would like to lock that target in place, and then move the camera around that target so we can do uh, kind of quicker animations, like uh, my equivalence to Maya's camera aim. Uh, with very simple expressions, a little bit long, but I'm going to keep them on the screen right here so you guys can see them. And let's go ahead and create a quick gizmo. So the cool thing about this is that it's not hard to do. Uh, you can find these expressions anywhere out there on the internet. Uh, Nukipedia and a couple other resources out there. And there's a couple of gizmos that people have built. Uh, but it's cool to actually build your own and customize it for your own type of pipeline or workflow. And every time a new version of Nuke comes out, you could customize it to those new features as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with a very simple uh, scenario. All right, so let's go ahead and create the notes that we need. For this, we will need a couple of notes. So first, let's go ahead and create a camera. All right, also we will need an access note. And two more nodes, that is, one is going to be the input, and this is going to allow us to connect anything when we're doing the gizmo, like an access node to control both of the elements, so we can move them as a unison. And then also we will need an output node. Uh, that way this will allow us to connect that gizmo over to the scanline render or the scene node or any other thing that we need to connect it to. So after we have these two guys, the next thing I like to do is I like to name my elements based on the expressions that I'm going to be working with. So given some descriptive names. So for example, the first one is going to be camera underscore aim. And that's what is going to correspond to my specific expression and what I'm going to be using. And then the second one will be my camera target. Uh, in this case, I name it cam target. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And the next thing that we need to do is connect the expressions into the proper areas. So for this, go back to your camera aim. And let's go ahead and go to the rotate attribute and right click over that and edit expressions. So on the X, we're going to copy the one that starts with the degrees. And on the Y, we're going to start with the one that says camera anim. Now the last element, the Z, I'm just going to put curve. You can leave it by itself, but I like to just put curve on there and hit OK. Now you're going to see it inverted. Of course, it's a different one than the one that we have currently there. And what I'm going to do is just connect this to the output of the one that we currently have. Now let's go ahead and test it out very quickly. So double click on it. And you will see now that if I move this guy to the front and I start moving up and down, now the camera is constrained to wherever that locator is. Now the other thing happens around, if you select the camera, it's now constrained to the locator. Okay, so now that we have those two connected, the next thing that we have to do is go ahead and select the camera aim. And I'm going to change the color of that. And then double click on the camera target and let's do the same thing. So there you go. There's our two notes. And now this will can make it a group node and we can start creating the controls for our gizmo. So next thing I need to do is I need to reveal the attributes that I want for the specific uh, node. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go very quick and I'm going to pick some of the attributes for my gizmo. And what do I need is essentially I need the camera target and uh, I need a couple of things out of this one. Um, and I also I need the camera aim that is the camera itself. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the camera aim and usually I like to use all the assets from that and that's fine like if it was my normal camera. Um, but sometimes the rotation we're not going to be tweaking that rotation. So probably the rotation you want to actually hide that because it's being controlled by the expression. So what we're going to do is find that rotation and just hit delete. And essentially we're not going to have the rotation but all the other functionality of the camera we will have. Um, so. Um, again, you can name it however you like, your user, you can name it camera, and so on and so forth, and then you can name it target. So what I like to do is I like to divide it, so we'll have a divider line at the bottom. And then after that divider line, um, so I'm going to add, and divider line is going to be a name as well, but I'm going to get that. And uh, I'm going to name that uh, <clears throat> target, and hit OK very quick, and get uh, edit. Completely forgot to put on the label and hit OK. So now my target is going to be underneath there. So what I want for my target is simple. The camera target is kind of the same principles as the camera. I want all the settings uh, that I need for my target. Uh, but if we don't want to read from file stuff to get so we don't get confused, probably what we want to do is everything else from there down except for the rotation. So I'm going to do the same thing. Hit OK. 
And again, I like to reveal probably less amount, but uh, in this case, what we're doing is just testing uh, things out. So I'm going to delete that. Yes, it's done. And now we have both settings for both of the elements. Now, you you probably will like to minimize this to whatever you really need or whatever functionality you really need. So if you give it to other artists, they don't get kind of crazy selecting and putting all these other things. Like, uh, for example, the one that I have here is very minimalistic, right? It's, it's only those settings that I need the artist to see. That's about it. I don't want them using anything else. That's, that's only the, the thing that I need. So if they need to animate an extra rotation or everything as a global unit, they could actually put a new axis node in there. And then they can control all that based on this new axis. So they can move the whole rig based on that. So if I take that, I take that new axis, they'll be able to move the camera aim constraint and everything with that no, new rig. But you, again, you can include things like this on your specific uh, group node. All right, so the next thing that we're going to add to it is uh, we need that type of projection system in there. Um, so the camera projection. So what we're going to do is, uh, so we control the lens and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and manage user nups, and we're going to go ahead and add a new tab and make sure that you select the last element in there. Add a new tab, and we're going to call this projection. So it matches. Um, and so let's take that and hit OK. So the next thing is we're going to go and pick camera aim, select the projection settings, and go all the way through through F stop and hit OK and done. So now you have all the settings of the camera in there. Now the user, you can name that. And uh, let's name that edit uh, camera. So let's take on the label here and camera. And that's it. So now that we have that, let's hit done. The next thing that we'd like to do is make this a little bit more distinctive. So let's give it a name to the gizmo cam aim. So that way we have a name and let's give it a color. So one of the things I like to do is every time I create this gizmo, I like to know that I'm using the gizmo. Um, so if I'm far away, I still know the camera. So let's go to the display here and change it from wireframe to solid. And let's give it a different color to that solid. Um, so now you could do this in the internal camera or you could do it here on the gizmo. Um, so one of the things that you could do is if on the gizmo here, it doesn't work the way that you want to, you could go internally on the gizmo and you could change the camera color in here and click on this little second um, icon there for the uh, for the color swatch. And you can change the color to whatever you want. So you can make your own custom camera so you know is your camera and that's it. So let's give it a color like a blue, for example. And now that we have that, essentially that's it for our gizmo. And now we could export that gizmo by going to the node section um, in the gizmo. And you go all the way to the bottom, export gizmo, save it to wherever you need. So in this case, I save my gizmos all to my .nuke file. Um, so I have it set up on my Dropbox. So I tend to have everything on the Dropbox or in a, in a cloud system. So I'm going to go to my .nuke and uh, save your gizmo in there. So go to your .nuke, .nuke folder and put your gizmo right in there and do all the other stuff um, in order to get it to the menus and all the stuff and get into uh, so you could load it every time and just hit save and that's essentially it now the cool thing about this the other thing that you could do is that not only the camera will work with it but how many times we have tried to look through the light make sure that the light does the same thing you could also create a new light constraint as well so in this case I call them light aim and I base it off different versions of nuke so I have different versions in the sense of nuke 7, nuke 8 um, so we could prepare a new one for Nuke 8 to see any of the changes or anything like that. But the cool thing about this is that now you don't have to go through and look through the light while you're trying to uh, target all those things in. You just create it on the light and that's it. Now you got a light constraint where you're able to control anywhere uh, that the light is pointing at and you're able to constrain those things um, very efficiently and very fast. So that's been it uh, for today's quick tip, and uh, I hope you liked it. And again, like I said before, all this information is out there for you for the grabs. It's just a matter of putting it all together and creating your own tools and your own pipeline for it. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Peter Flores for VFX Launchbox.